Good morning. Today is March 14th, known as 3.14, or Pi Day. She's my number Pi. 3.14159265358979. It's a day in which we often stay home in the snow and celebrate math by eating pie in the form of pizza or cake or many other forms. Oh, four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. When the pie was open, the birds began to sing. Dum, dum, Wasn't dum, that a dum, weird dum, dish dum, to set dum, before dum, the dum, king? Dum, dum, dum. Hi. Hi, I'm the baker. Yeah. Can I help you? Yeah, me want something delicious. But me forgot what it is. Oh. Well, uh, gee, this is a bakery, yeah. so there's lots of delicious stuff here you yeah. could buy. Wait, wait, buy, that's it. Me want something that rhyme with the word buy. Something yeah. that rhymes with the word buy, like yeah. sky or fly or yeah, yeah, sigh. Yeah, or... yeah but, but must be something to eat. Huh. Uh, <gasps> look at that. What? Oh, ho. Huh? M. I-K-E-S. Mike's. Yeah, that's my name. Oh, but look, M-I. I rhyme with by. Hey, what are you oh, doing? Oh. Hey. Oh. What? Oh. what are you doing there? Um. Ah. He's mm. eating my letter I. No, me ate I. And it's pretty good, but not delicious. Not delicious. Me want something delicious. What rhyme with buy the delicious? Gee, I don't know. Stand back, me huh? see something. What? Oh ho! Tie, tie rhyme with buy. Ah. Oh. Mm. Uh, hey. Ah. Um. Uh, he ate my tie. Not bad, but not delicious. Uh. Oh, what rhyme with buy? Uh, I delicious. can't think of anything. Me neither. Good afternoon, this is Guy Smiley, star of daytime television, and I am here to buy a pie. Oh, Mr. Guy Smiley, you mm -hmm. want to buy a pie? What to rhyme with buy? I think I'd like to buy this pie right here. You want to buy this pie? What to rhyme with buy the delicious? That's the pie I'm here to buy. Wait, wait, me know what to rhyme with buy and is delicious and is in bakery? What's he talking about? It. Guy! Why? Huh? Um, ah, delicious! Hey, ah, hey, oh, hey, wait a minute. Oh, hey, wait, oh, wait, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait oh, Mr. Oh, Smiley. Hey, Guy! Guy! Oh, Rock oh, him up! Can you rock him up? Me got him! Oh, oh, over here! Oh, oh me got him! Oh, oh, hey, oh Guy, wait! Oh, what about the pie? Wait, I'm a cheap cost! What about the pie? Wait! What about the pie? Send me the bill. But Pi Day really represents the concepts of math. Math helps us in terms of everything we do, from baking a cake or a pie, to figuring out the rent for our apartment, our house, our car, how much we should spend on something. Check out this phenomenal math example. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You owe me back room rent. Now don't get excited, how much is it? You owe me 13 weeks at $7 a week. Tidy sum, isn't it? Pardon me just a minute. Sure. Uh, Lou. Uh, here's twenty-eight dollars. Twenty-eight dollars? Give him that old routine of ours, you know, seven into twenty-eight, thirteen times. Ooh, hey. Give me the Crayola. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here. Now, and do it right this time. I hope it works. Make it snappy. Okay. Uh, Mr. Landlord. Yeah? <laughs> You smoking an army blanket? Never mind about that. You owe me room rent. All right, here's $28. $28, fine. Just a minute. You owe me 13 weeks at $7 a week, and that happens to be a lot more than $28. Well, that comes to $28. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. Do you mean to say that you can prove that 7 times 13 is 28? Well, it's got to be. Certainly it is, because Mr. Rabbit and I, that, that, that's $28. That's what you get. If you can prove it, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will give you the room rent for nothing. You will? But... If you don't prove it, you owe me double the back rent. Is it a deal? That's a deal. Okay. Do you happen to have any Crayola on there? Crayola? Never mind. I got it. Oh, you have? I got the Crayola. The 7 to 28 is going to come out 13. That's your way. That's my way. And it's got to come out right. Now, first, I put down the 7. Right. Now, I'm going to divide the 7 into 28. Yeah. I put 
A 28 there. Okay. And that's cute. <clears throat> now, here we go. Seven into two. Seven will not go into two. It will not. That's a very big seven to push into that little bit of two. I should say it is. We ain't gonna hurt that little two, are we? Of course you will. So we take the two. Open your hand. Yes. And I put that two right there for safekeeping. But don't drop it and don't lose it. Now, seven into eight. Once. Once. I put the one over here. One over there. Now, we're gonna carry the seven because it's very big and it's getting heavy on my shoulders. And I'm gonna drop the seven under there. Now, seven from eight. Is one. Is one. I put the one down there. Mm-hmm. Now it comes. Would you mind opening up your palm of your hand, please? I would like to use that two. Open it up. Give me that two. You've had it long enough. <laughs> I'm gonna put that two right there. Now, seven into 21? Three times. That's right. Seven into 28? 13. Oh, wait, a minute. Wait, a minute. wait a minute. You have to prove this even better than that. You can prove it very easily by multiplication. You mean you want me to multiply it? No, no, not multiply, multiply. <laughs> Multiply. All right, all right, all right. Multiply it. Seven times thirteen. It's Prove 28. it. Go seven ahead. Times, now first we got to put down a thirteen, right? Right. There's a thirteen. Times seven. Times seven. Right. Seven weeks times thirteen, right? Seven times three. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Seven times one. Seven. Seven. Seven and one. Eight. And Judith Perry. Twenty-eight. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm still not convinced. There's one sure way of proving this. One sure way, and that's by addition. You want me to addition it up? I want you to put 13 seven times on that wall and then draw a line and add them up. You want me to put down 13 seven times? That's right. <laughs> Let's cut them out right. <laughs> There's one. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. Six. Six. Seven. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the idea of spreading them out like that? Well, it looks like a, a flock of seagulls gonna hit the electric poles. <laughs> Now we're gonna add them up, right? All right, go ahead. Here we go. Three, six, wait a minute, nine. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me do the adding this time. Good. <laughs> Come out right. <laughs> well, a three, a six, a nine. Just a minute. I will do the adding. Then there'll be no mistake. Yeah? All right. <laughs> Twenty-eight dollars <laughs> each. All right. Sure. Now. Go ahead. If you had it up, go ahead. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. <laughs> But the truth is, pi represents this idea that numbers continue on forever and that there is no end. It's only a little bit coincidental that the number of pi, 3.14, has other representations as well. For example, when Hashem created the world, Hashem at the end of his creation said, She die, that the creation should stop because everything in creation is under my control. The word Shin Dalad Yud, Hashem's name that stopped creation and controls everything is the number 314. At the beginning and the end of the Megillah, the first word is Vayihi, and the last word is Zaro. The Gematria, the numeric value of those two words together, is 314. Because Hashem is always in control of everything. Unless we think that nature or that numbers, or that something else actually controls the world, Hashem wants us to know that ultimately, He is in control of everything that happens. You know, it's 30 days before Pesach today, and there's a special halacha that one should focus 30 days before a holiday on the upcoming holiday. So, if we look back at the Pesach story, we will find the exact same message. Hashem was always there. He was always in control. And ultimately, he turned nature upside down to show that he is in control of nature before he took us out of Mitzrayim. Enjoy your snow pie day. Have a wonderful and amazing rest of your day.